Hello, it's Patrick Ash, author, musician, and elder millennial pissant. Please see my books below. We're going to talk about Palestine and Gaza. And this is, as I've said for my first video, my video blog for discussion, not debate. So, as I once heard, I think it was a logic class or philosophy class or something, that each productive, either debate or discussion, differing views, should begin with an agreement. Something we, kind of like a basis of what we should, um, different sides can agree upon. I'll put forward two. One is targeting civilians is never morally justified, okay? So I think already anybody who would say we must condemn Hamas and the atrocities on October the 7th can agree with that, that targeting civilians for hurting, killing, murder, sexual assault, rape is categorically wrong. Now, I want to have another, another point, and that is wanton disregard for civilians, even if you're not necessarily targeting them, is also wrong. Now, you can debate that targeting is m more, like morally worse, but I think wanton disregard is still, I mean, I think even in a court of law, people would have that debate about that kind of scenario. I'm going to use a few examples, okay? A few hypotheticals, some of which probably have happened in real life. Um, how about if a notorious serial killer, murderer, rapist escapes and uh, the police are trying to catch this person and they lose this person in the crowd and then they see them at one point and seem to have a shot, right? Now, should they take that shot or not? You see this in like TV shows and movies and whatnot. Um, many people would say like, well, you probably want to be fairly certain that you're going to get the perpetrator, not other you know, innocent stand buyers. Um, so we can kind of evaluate situation by situation, but I think overall most people would say you want to be fairly certain of that. You don't want to hit an innocent bystander. Um, now, some may say, okay, well, this is already not, not analogous to, to Palestine because you know, many Palestinians have proven that they agree with the Hamas ideology and they've said terrible things. They celebrated on October 7th, just as they once did on 9-11, which I'll also t touch on. Um, and so you can bring up the point of like, well, what if that crowd is not just innocent bystanders, so to speak, but what if they have sympathies with that individual? Um, I think none of these analogies are going to be perfect. No analogy ever is, but a, an example more fitting for that would be the Waco siege. Uh, if you may, may recall, definitely look, look that up if you haven't. Uh, but the Waco siege, I think it was 93, I want to say, and, um, in which the, you know, the, the federal government went after the branch Davidians. Uh, and David Koresh was a sp suspect of, uh, I think different charges, but including like statutory rape, sexual assault, and um, uh, I think maybe firearms charges. But um, they knew that he was running, you know, the Branch Davidians and that they had said all kind of anti-government things. Um, and, you know, I'm not gonna go through all the details, you can look it up, but just to illustrate a, well, the people in that the Branch Davidian compound presumably all support David Koresh, even though, let's say, you know, let's, I don't know all the ins and outs of it personally, but let's say all those charges are accurate, that he'd done all those terrible things. Morally speaking, would it still be okay to burn down the compound? And of course, people debate how that happened, if the branch of did it themselves, or if the government did it, or if they did it in a uh, in a panic, whatever. Um, the branch of did it. Is, uh, so, kind of leaving that aside, let's just say for the sake of argument, what if the government's like, well, either we go in or we don't? And how long can we, you know, maintain the siege? And it, what, it was something like a month or two, some, and um, they like played super loud music and use other kind of interrogate, uh, interrogation tactics. And something that's currently happening in Palestine and, and I, I think happened in uh, Waco and has happened in um, various conflicts over history is the whole, well, let's demoralize the population so they rise against um, their leaders, which feel free to look up any research. My understanding of the latest research is that it, uh, that it is not effective, uh, that many, in many historical examples, it usually hardens 
um, the people's support of their leader, because all they're hearing, of course, is their leader, especially if they're authoritarian and they control communication, etc. cetera, um, that typically that mm -hmm. will make them more beholden. And you might think but that leader is such an evil person who does terrible things, but that's not what their people are hearing necessarily. So anyway, but as far as Waco goes, um, just hypothetically, if the government was deciding whether or not to um, to burn down the compound or go on guns blazing, whatever, um, you might make an argument that like, well, the adults are complicit because they agree with David Koresh and they're okay with all the bad things he does. What about the children? Let's just start right there. What about children? How are children complicit? And I think in your moral calculus, you always have to consider that. But of course, in this conflict currently, as in so many, like when someone picks a side, and I'm I'm rolling my eyes at tribalism itself and the inability of people to think rationally, people who are otherwise very intelligent and capable of moral reasoning, they'll just harp on like the anecdotes, right? They'll just harp on the video evidence of this situation or that person that backs them up and of course ignores what doesn't. Uh, and that's classic confirmation bias. Uh, unfortunately, that's a very common bias, you know, that people will tend to um, select evidence that reinforces their point and disregard evidence that does not, both in their gathering of information and sharing um, or analysis of information. Um, so, so, that was Waco. Um, I thought of another kind of... Um, hackneyed uh, allegory uh, or, um, you know, hypothetical. What if, um, for instance, uh, Timothy McVeigh, another kind of homegrown terrorist in the United States, um, he was, you know, he was an Oklahoma City bomber, um, 1995, I think it was. And I think he was executed Terre Haute, Indiana, summer 2001. I remember just because I happened to have a uh, trip there um, in May of that year. But um, if Hypothetically, a terrorist like Timothy McVeigh escapes and they, you know, flee to some compound or some town that's sympathetic to their aims, sympathetic to their ideas. Even still, you have the problem with children. Like, would you bomb that place to get the bad guy, so to speak? And if someone objects to it and says, I don't think you should kill all those children in the name of killing a terrorist... People, of course, come back with, but he did terrible things with the, the emotional argument, not the logical argument, but the emotional argument of like, you must not care as much about all the bad things that this person did. Otherwise, you would support me. And this happens in so, so many debates when people harden their, you know, their allegiances or whatever and insist that I've talked about this in, in terms of the Ukraine conflict. Um, in past videos, and I've lost friends about that because I'm like, you should at least be able to negotiate. No, that's pro-Putin. And if you want to downvote me, please, please do it right. I think that guy might actually be a lurker here. Maybe, maybe not. But um, hopefully he is. Please, go ahead, downvote, because I think we shouldn't have to go to nuclear war to maintain territorial sovereignty. I think we, territorial sovereignty is important and that the invasion was reprehensible and wrong. Putin is bad, that does not justify continued bloodshed when you can at least negotiate. And that hand is weaker now than when I made that argument back in 2022. And, um, uh, but Boris Johnson and, and um, the United States and all of our uh, um, military industrial complex wanted their war anyway. Um, so proxy war is still happening, still many innocent people dying. And of course what someone will say whether it's that argument or uh, currently, is like if you object to these, the campaign, the self-defense that some call it, and again, see how it's a, it's a, there's another saying in, what's it, logic or philosophy or whatever, which is one who def, who controls the definitions controls the arguments, uh, for better or worse, um, because people say, well, it's just self-defense. And so you would think, oh, who would object to self-defense? How could you How could you do that? But then you have to discuss, debate, even though I don't like debating in this forum, I have in academic circles in my personal life and so on. Um, 
I just think online ones tend to be just people throwing shit at each other and not thinking. But anyway, um, see if a commenter wants to prove me right. Um, but, um, so people will argue over terms and say, no, it's just self-defense. How can you object to self-defense? Um, and again, like the, the common fallacies of, if you say, I don't think it's necessary to kill large amounts of children, whether it's in a Waco siege, whether it's trying to catch a terrorist, Osama bin Laden, we get to 9-11 in a minute, uh, or, or now with um, Hamas, uh, which a lot of people don't seem to know that Hamas leaders aren't actually in the Gaza Strip. Um, please check me on this, but I've heard that there are a few in Turkey and a few in Qatar, I think. Anyway, um, but the point being that it's like you're not, you're doing collective punishment and not actually going after those who are responsible. So yeah, I'll get to 9-11 minutes. So yeah, like say hypothetically, uh, Tim, uh, Timothy McVeigh or someone like that escapes to a place that's very, um, um, uh, believes in their cause or whatever and, do and doesn't either doesn't know or doesn't care about his um, crimes um, is it still okay to wantonly kill large amounts of children because I've seen news articles recently I think the Times of Israel had one article that said like don't be naive there are no civilians in Gaza like that is that according to this headline doesn't exist and others have made that argument that there's no such thing as innocent civilians. So, theoretically, you could be a day-old baby and be just as much Hamas or Hamas sympathizer or whatever as anyone else and thus eligible for violent retribution. Anyway, okay. So, but what about 9-11? I think there, it's not perfectly parallel. People can argue that, but... In the very least, it's sort of a, well, here in the West, we experience this terrorist attack, right? And um, I can tell you my personal, just very briefly, this is a video blog, of course. Um, I was at my most politically conservative in college, a little bit to my shame. I was never a neoconservative, but it's sort of, it's a long story short. I, you know, read Thomas Sowell, and uh, I bought into some of the arguments, and um, I was very lonely at the time, so uh, I still am, honestly, but um, I kind of felt like, I didn't quite agree with anybody, but anyway, uh, I, I had previously been very, much more radical. I listened to hardcore punk, Dead Kennedys, Propagandy, and uh, well, um, um, you know, Minor Threat, Black Flag, um, and um, Rage Against the Machine, of course. And of course, long story short, I'm very close to that now. Not not 100, percent but anyway. So in college, I was I was um, fairly conservative at the time, and so when 9/11 happened. It was like, okay, this horrific terrorist attack happened on U.S. soil. And of course, we would. I remember thinking, well, we got to go after those who were responsible for this. And note my naivety here in 9-11, or in the American response to 9-11, versus uh, the Israeli and kind of greater U.S. and Western response to Hamas on um, uh, October 7th of this year, 2023. All right, so I thought when 9-11 happened, like I, and I, I remember waking up that morning and I, I got up late and then went to like a 10 o'clock class. So by this point, I think the planes had already hit and maybe the World Trade Center had already uh, collapsed. But um, I passed the neighbor who was like, did you hear what happened? I was like, no, what happened? And it was like perfectly blue sky, pretty day. I think it was a little cool. You can kind of feel fall coming. Uh, and like the planes hit uh, the World Trade Center and the Pentagon and, and another one in Pennsylvania. And... Um, and that's all they could say because I had to run to class and I'm like, oh God, that's terrible. And so I'm walking to class like, oh, this, I didn't know what to think. I was like, just alone with my thoughts for 10 or minutes or so. And I'm like, God, what the hell is happening? Are we in World War Three? Or, you know, why are they doing this? What in the hell? Because I, you know, I was like about 18 at the time. Um, so in my naivety, my thought was, okay, well, this is a horrific thing. And so we have to find and kill those who are responsible, right? Yeah, that's what I thought. And so what I had pictured, um, sorry, I'm reminding this. So what I had pictured from that was that um, we would, like what that looked like was that we would have, um, you know, like a strike team, like a, a Navy SEALs or something like that, that would get those who are responsible for planning it. It's like, obviously the hijackers are dead, are dead but 
you know, bin Laden and any other kind of Al Qaeda leaders who had any um, any part in 9/11, uh, and that's what I believed. I thought that's what we should do. But that's not what we did. To anyone who knows basic history of the past 20 years, we invaded Afghanistan, and then later we invaded Iraq under the pretenses first it was because Saddam helped in 9/11, and it was well, okay, not really, but he has weapons of mass destruction, and then after the invasion. Okay, well, I didn't find the evidence. We, mm -mm. of course, that was a, a whole other uh, pack of lies. And then it was like, oh well, Saddam's a bad guy. So if you don't agree with the invasion, then you're like Neville Chamberlain. That's the theme here for those who follow me in Ukraine. If you d disagree with this, then you're like Neville Chamberlain. You're appeasing, like you're appe you would appease Hitler. You're appease Saddam Hussein, and so on. Um, and of course, it's logical garbage. Uh, or illogical garbage. So, anyway, so I had thought after 9-11, that's it, like, we would go after those who were directly responsible, and then we didn't. And it's like, oh, we're going into Afghanistan. Again, this is me, my most conservative, and so, and my neighbor tells like, okay, well, I guess this will maybe be a few months, and we'll capture those who are part of Al-Qaeda, and then we'll come home. Yeah, we just left Afghanistan last year, I think it was. Um, and then, instead of having just a clean break leaving, we had one last drone strike that killed an aid worker and his family. Innocent blood, again, on U.S. hands, as it was for uh, citizens in Afghanistan and Iraq, and honestly, in many um, places throughout the Middle East. And of course, good God. I think even then, I didn't believe the bullshit of, they hate us for our freedom. And that that was the entire moral calculus of, like, they just hate us because we're free, and that's it. I think even then, I was like, oh, they must have some issues with us, maybe it's because we have military bases over there, or, or, um, or somehow through our economics, not, you know, keep, we're keeping them down, or, anyway. So, um, I thought we would send in surgical strike teams, and that, I mean, eventually we did, and when we got Bin Laden in, what, 2011 in Pakistan, but, you know, we had these gigantic wars, you know, hundreds of thousands dead, uh, including service members of the United States military, and, Anyway, um, so I don't think history will be kind to the neoconservative foreign policy and how it's like, well, to, it's to keep us safe. Do we really think we're safer now than we were back then? And yet, even our own CIA had said we should study blowback, meaning the consequences of our, our, our uh, American empire and when we you know, nation build and regime change and all that shit, um, how it blows up in our face. Um, and a lot of this was also, this interventionist foreign policy goes back to Reagan, of course. I mean, honestly, back to Korea and Vietnam. And um, even further back, I mean, I think many of us could agree upon um, the morality of the United States in World War II. Like, if anything, they, we should have entered sooner. Um, and not just after Pearl Harbor, but that's another discussion. Um, but as Smedley Butler once said, and I quote him in my most recent book, The Winter Queen Contingency, which is otherwise a very 2023 relevant for politics. Uh, it's a zombie apocalypse, but a lot of it is about uh, global uh, power shifts and these kinds of arguments. Um, but I quote at some point in that book, uh, Smedley Butler, the one of the most decorated Marines in US history, when he said, war is a racket. And that's unfortunately the case. I have also talked about my father and how he enlisted in the Marines, uh, like, right as Vietnam was getting started. And uh, he served, he got battlefield promotions, he came back and he protested the war. And um, and I could, I could say more about that, but he, he had also tried to call out war crimes even during the war. So, um, we live by principle, and I hope to follow in that same footsteps. As my grandfather found the 101st Airborne in Bastogne, he actually fought real Nazis, not just someone that you disagree with or um, but actual posing a clear and uh, present danger, anyway. Um, so, all right, so on 9-11, I thought, surgical strike, right? That That's what, and that's not what happened. We had regime change wars that have cost trillions of dollars and countless lives, and for what? Do we still believe this garbage? Like, the Lindsey Grahams of the world and your Bush Cheney, um, you know, uh, Romney, um, I mean, 
going back to like Paul Wolfowitz, I think is in the defense department, and of course, Donald Rumsfeld, th that entire neoconservative apparatus that is still apparently our way of thinking because they're still, they're not tried in the Hague and put into prisons for torture and for wanton killing of uh, civilians, but rather um, they're seen now as like, oh, they're not as bad because we had Trump and Trump is the real uh, terror and the, and, the whole whitewashing neoconservatism is fucking repugnant and anyway so so that was back after 9 11 and if, and i was even at a, on a radio debate at that time like I, identifying as being a conservative if you can believe that um debating with leftist progressives and they were actually even farther than i, I currently am in the sense of they said the response to 9 11 should be nothing at all and i still thought that was wrong i was like no they should get those who are directly responsible and maybe i don't know study why it happened so that we can prevent it that way. The most effective form of prevention, um, or rather re responding to terrorism is to prevent it from ever happening because, anyway, uh, but what they'll say to that is they hate us for freedom, blah, 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 and that, uh, you know, this kind of, um, um, anyway. Um, so, of course, flash forward to this year, and of course, I don't claim to be um, a expert on any of this, few people are however all of us should be concerned with the morality of global politics and so on israel and palestine you can go back to 1948 that's a starting point for many people um but if we just want to talk about october 7th and how that was a terrorist attack and we all reject okay we, we can all agree that that was wrong they targeted civilians and like i said at the beginning that's categorically wrong okay so we all agree on that. So don't butt Hamas. Just don't. We all agree Hamas is bad. And if we really try to take them out, why wouldn't we send in, I don't know, a surgical strike team for wherever we know their leaders to be? And instead, we get collective punishment in this bombing campaign. Um, that, of course, again, our military industrial, industrial complex in the United States, Lockheed Martin, Hellfire missiles being um, um, given to Israel and where you see daily counts of hundreds of civilians killed to the tune, I think the most recent figure was around 20,000, 20,000 dead. And you can say, well, many of them are were Hamas or sympathize with Hamas. I'm like, well, by most estimates, roughly a third are children. So we're looking at, um, for 21, you know, about 8,000. So if you want to argue the morality and that we all agree Hamas is bad, targeting civilians is bad, but in that response, whether it is with Waco or, um, sorry, I think I went on a trail earlier about Timothy McVeigh. Like, even if he escaped from prison, and we all agree he's a terrible person who did terrible things, does that justify killing children? And of course, what people say to that often is like, well, war is hell. It's awful. Terrible things happen. You know, um, you, you can make that argument. However, Bring your figures, bring your data. Uh, oftentimes in wars, it's like, what, 10, 20, 30% civilians um, versus military targets. Um, I think even the conservative estimates of how many of those being killed right now in the Gaza Strip, how many are civilian, non-militants are civilians, is I think conservatively 60%. Many estimates go as high as 80 or 90%. So just think about that prospect. Let, let's, let, let's be conservative if you want to be. Let's say 75%. So you kill four people. One of them was a Hamas fighter or whatever, and the other three were not. And of course, there's also the other issue of, are you creating people who are sympathetic to Hamas or that ideology because all they know is violence? They're born, they're raised, and all they know is that bombs are falling. And then of course, people say, well, then that's why their leaders shouldn't be firing rockets. Um, and look at the data going back, I, I, like the UN data and others I've seen, even before October 7th, um, was in almost every incursion between Israel and Palestine. And people, and people argue who fired first, who shot first. The number of casualties on Palestine is averages out to roughly 20 dead to one Israeli. And again, any innocent loss of life is, is de morally deplorable, whether Israeli or Palestinian anyone on the planet, any human being, because this should be about human rights that we apply consistently. 
So if we're trying to make a moral judgment, whether in this situation or any, we should act as though, I mean, this is basic moral philosophy and I wish people, whatever your feelings, whatever your allegiance is, um, nationality, religion, it, it, like you should apply it consistently, hu universal human rights that act as though all people have the same worth. And you can say, well, it's different when they're a terrorist or they're, um, you know, part of a hate group or something like that. And that, like, when you argue someone who has shown clear and present danger, then agreed when it's a terrorist or someone who is part of their plot, their their actions and their threats, their, their direct threats. But when you, and this is a very important point, but when you start to extrapolate that beyond those who are directly responsible to anyone, it's like if someone even lives near them, and of course children, when you go over that line and say they are just as responsible, like that one day old baby is just as much Hamas as you know the ones firing the rockets. Do you not think you just lost the damn script? And you might say, what script? And perhaps George Orwell and Animal Farm, right? Um, that was a you know, great satire of politics in many ways. But, you know, what starts is all animals are equal. And it's like, oh, that sounds like, in, in this story, you know, that sounds like they are coming up with a good moral philosophy for for their, um, you know, their politics. But then later in the book, it turns into all animals are equal, but some are more equal than others, which it, people will argue. It's like, oh, well, you've got to be, you have to be an expert or you have to know all the intricacies of the history and you have to be a member of a certain group to, to know the subtlety that, you know, an innocent life uh, taken on October the 7th is an, is an outrage. You know, the death of one is a tragedy. The death of a million is a statistic. I think they attribute that to Stalin, but I think it's like apocryphal from a few places. But anyway, so people will argue that, like, an innocent life taken on October 7th. I'm like, yes, agreed, that is an atrocity. So why wouldn't we do whatever we could to stop the terrorists? And it's like, because what's, because the real argument should ultimately, and I'm sure we've got extremists on all sides or whatever, but I'm arguing what it should come down to is tactics. Like we can all agree that, again, uh, Timothy McVeigh was a bad person. David Koresh was a bad person. Saddam Hussein, Osama bin Laden, the leadership of Hamas, and people who participate uh, in um, terrorist attacks by Hamas, that these are all bad, deplorable people who, who are clear and present danger, and they need to be stopped. And at the same time saying, how, did that, how does that justify a tactic of collective punishment and bombing entire uh, um, buildings and city blocks and hospitals and uh, mosques and churches and and the list goes on and on and on. And it's like, because Hamas uses human shields. It's, it's, it's their fault. It's their fault. Come on. We've seen this television show. We've seen this movie. And like when that bad person takes a hostage, we're like, well, we're just trying to get the bad person. We can't, uh, if we were to kill both a hostage and him, well, in a way, it makes us as bad as he is because we've killed an innocent person. Um, but, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Um, so, so we've all seen that. And so we, we recognize that's not acceptable. And even in that uh, show or movie, again, I know that's just for analogy, just for comparison, um, that um, there's a Stockholm syndrome, you know, like where the, where the, the, the ones they've captured start to agree with them or, or, or support them in some way, we still recognize them, you know, the moral reasoning of that still, that doesn't justify killing them. Uh, that justifies killing the, you know, the terrorists, the ones who are holding them hostage because they're a clear and direct threat to those hostages and other people. Um, like we can all agree on that. That should be a given because I see this damn argument over and over again, all over the internet. It's like, then you must not appreciate how awful they are over and over and over again. It, it, it is emotional, it's a, a pathos-based argument, it's not a logic-based argument. It's not one rooted in what is a principle that can apply to all human beings. Is it, do we say a, a collective punishment is justified or bombing an entire neighborhood is justified if the person we're trying to catch is a really bad person? Again, like I said at the very beginning, we all agree it's a bad person. We all agree. 
and still those tactics show wanton disregard for human life. That's where we should also agree. Anyway, so this is a 30 minutes. Um, I already tried to do a version that's not quite as long, but anyway, uh, I hope this at least gets people to think, to think, and that we should have universal human rights without respect to religion, nationality, faith. It, it should be equitable across the board for all people. And that to object to these methods should not be considered bigoted, like, oh, you must be against me and, and my group because, you know, like the Irish Catholics and, and the Troubles because, um, because, you know, terrorists have killed um, innocent people in that conflict. On and on. Um, it's like we categorically agree that terrorism is wrong and also that to resist the killing of innocent people is, you know, you get my point. Um, I want to be not quite as long-winded, but, um, all right. So hopefully people, will, if you're going to have an emotion-based argument, that emotion should be care for all human beings equitably. Stop killing children.